snacks that keep your blood sugar low limit the fat storing hormone insulin and control hunger. I pitted four seemingly healthy snacks against each other and used this non-prescription CGM from Levels to see how each one impacted my blood sugar. This video shares the best and worst snack results and how Levels is making it possible for you to get this blood sugar monitoring tool for yourself. For this video, I not only wanted to see how a snack impacts my blood sugar, but also compare snacks to rank them from best to worst. Levels made this comparison easy. This is Levels. They are sponsoring this video. The company makes it possible for people without diabetes to get this preventative tool called a CGM or continuous glucose monitor. And I will share my snack results in a moment, but first, I know from a past video that there are a lot of questions about how you can get this device with or without a prescription and what to expect as far as cost. CGMs allow you to closely monitor your blood sugar. Some countries offer them over the counter. In the United States, you can go to your doctor's office and ask for a prescription, or you can join Levels, which offers two paths to get a CGM. You can consent to be part of their research study on glucose patterns in people without diabetes, which allows you to use a CGM without a prescription. If you choose not to participate in the study, Levels will connect you with an asynchronous physician consultation to see if you qualify for a prescription. The choice is yours. Either way, Levels makes it possible for you to get CGMs, but they do not profit from the sale of the CGM. They sell them at cost to members to keep costs as low as possible. The reality is that healthcare pays for sick care. So when devices like CGMs are used as preventative tools, the costs fall on our shoulders. A month supply of CGMs cost $199. Levels only makes money on their membership, which is a one-time fee of $199 a year. So if you want to wear a CGM daily, the cost of being a Levels member and having monthly CGM shipments would be about $2,600 a year. That is really expensive and why Levels allows you to order CGMs at any frequency you'd like. When you sign up for a Levels annual membership and buy a month's supply of CGMs, that gives you a full month to see how the foods you eat are affecting you. There's no commitment to continue past that month. However, if you would like to, you can control the frequency of delivery right from your member's portal or cancel whenever you'd like. For example, some members choose to have CGMs sent to them four months out of the year. This allows you to control your costs, yet have a CGM to help you navigate each season or monitor what your food choices are doing to you over the holidays, which can motivate you to stay on track. Do I wish preventative tools like CGMs were less expensive? Yes. However, the cost of preventing disease is less than paying for it. As this prominent journal points out, Patients who had at least three criteria for metabolic syndrome had 60% higher annual costs compared with patients without metabolic syndrome. All right, I apologize if that was lengthy. I just wanted to address concerns that I know many of you had. If you are interested, you can click on my link in the video description area, levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky, which gives you an additional two months free of the Levels membership. Now, let's see how four popular snacks fared in regard to their blood sugar control. The snacks I chose to test were almonds, popcorn, hard-boiled eggs, and dark chocolate. I used 200 calorie portions as a standard for comparison. I also ate each snack at seven o'clock in the morning because I was in a fasted state and it eliminated confounding variables like exercise. I did drink black coffee each morning. To win the best snack for blood sugar control honor, the snack must perform well in two ways. First, I want to see a minimal blood sugar spike immediately after eating it. Second, I want a stable or gentle blood sugar rise and fall in the two hour period after consumption. The intensity of that first spike shows me how the food is affecting me. The degree of rise and fall over time shows me how my body is handling the food. And I will point that out more as we move through the snacks. But just to give you a hint of how dramatically different the response to foods can be, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the four snacks I tested. Now, there are some accepted generalities when it comes to macronutrients and blood sugar. 
Specifically, eating dietary fat causes little or no rise in blood sugar, protein causes a moderate rise, and carbs cause the highest rise. The thing is that we don't tend to snack on a single macronutrient food. In other words, we don't sit down and snack on a couple of tablespoons of butter, even though, in theory, that pure fat would provide a stable blood sugar response. Foods contain a mix of nutrients, so predictions are just guesses until you test. I started with 200 calories of raw almonds, which worked out to be 33 almonds. Like many raw nuts, almonds are a great example of a food with a mixture of macronutrients. This 200 calorie snack contains a healthy dose of hunger satisfying fats and near equal amounts of protein and carbs. Two things almonds have going for them are the fact that fat is the most prominent nutrient and the snack has a good fiber to carb ratio. Specifically, this snack has 4.3 grams of fiber and 7.5 grams of carbs. That's about a one to two fiber to carb ratio. Due to that fat and fiber content, I expect this snack to digest slowly, giving me a nice steady rise in my blood sugar over a two hour period. So when I was ready to test the almonds, I snapped a picture using my Levels app and the snack was recorded for me on my timeline where I could easily watch what it did. I see from the two hour analysis that the almond snack did not cause an immediate blood sugar spike and resulted in a gentle 18 milligram per deciliter rise in blood sugar. Levels assigned this snack a seven out of 10 with 10 being the best food for blood sugar stability. That was a good response and what I expected, but how does it compare with the other snacks? The next snack I tested was popcorn. Popcorn is a whole grain snack. It can technically be a low carb snack if you stop eating after one cup, but that's a big if when it comes with being faced with a bowl of popcorn. Anyway, I get a lot of questions about popcorn, so I decided to put it to the test. Now remember that each snack is standardized to 200 calories. This was by far the most volume of the four snacks. So I got up in the morning, poured myself a cup of black coffee and dug into six and a half cups of plain popcorn, trying not to be a glutton, but get the food in me as quickly as possible to keep the comparison fair. In other words, it was not enjoyable. The protein content of the popcorn snack was close to that of the almonds coming in at 6.7 grams, but that is where the similarities stopped. The popcorn contained over 40 grams of carbohydrates, but only 7.5 grams of fiber. So its fiber to carb ratio is not strong at about one to five. This was also the lowest fat snack with only 2.3 grams of fat in the entire bowl. So how did it fare? It caused an immediate, very steep spike of 150 points followed by a crash that dropped me 23 milligrams per deciliter lower than I was before eating it. That was not a favorable response. Levels assigned this popcorn snack a one, which is a very poor showing. With a couple of taps on my phone, I see that it was much worse at controlling my blood sugar compared to almonds. So this told me that the popcorn digested quickly, likely because there was not enough fat and fiber to slow absorption. So you might be wondering, would adding butter help? Butter is fat, so we can assume that adding it to popcorn would blunt the blood sugar rise. However, does that mean that it is better to eat popcorn with butter? If your only goal is stabilizing your blood sugar, then yes. If your goal is weight loss, there's more to the story. Butter will likely blunt the blood sugar response, but it will not halt it. So you are getting a release of the fat storing hormone insulin, and you're adding a lot more calories. If you're eating this while sitting on the couch watching a movie, you do not need that added energy, so your body will easily store much of that excess as fat. The bottom line on popcorn, it's tricky. And the bottom line of healthy snacking is that it's not solely dependent on its blood sugar response, but going too high too quickly and crashing or going up and staying up are valuable health tools. If your blood sugar rises steeply immediately after a meal, that means there was little in that meal to slow absorption. 
high blood sugar is a dangerous inflammatory state for your body to be in. So when blood sugar gets high, your pancreas releases insulin to clear it out of the blood. That is what happened inside of me. My blood sugar shot up and insulin was released to bring it down. So my body did what it was supposed to do, but if you call on your pancreas to clean up the mess too often, your cells grow tired of taking in the excess sugar and the stage is set for the development of insulin resistance. Levels is not meant to be a definitive test for insulin resistance. However, if you see your blood sugar stay high or bounce up and down at a higher than normal level, it may indicate that insulin is having a tough time doing its job. If you are seeing this happen, choose snacks that are high in protein and fat. The advantage is that those macronutrients do not spike blood sugar and insulin, so essentially you're making insulin's job easier. A good choice in theory is hard-boiled eggs. Let's see how they ranked when put to the test. Eggs have a great macronutrient breakdown for blood sugar control because they are mostly protein and fat with very few carbs. But did this promise of blood sugar control pan out when put to the test? Absolutely, yes. From the analysis, I see that eating two and a half hard-boiled eggs as a snack did not spike my blood sugar and instead maintained it within a narrow range. That was a stable response with only 12 milligrams per deciliter rise. What that says to me is that my body did not have to pump out a lot of insulin to reestablish a normal blood sugar level. That is something I want. Okay, with one more snack to go, our comparison shows that eggs are in the lead with a level score of nine out of 10. Let's move on to dark chocolate. I will say that there was a time in my life that having a legitimate reason to eat chocolate for breakfast would have been a dream come true. But after following a healthy low carb diet for years, I'm rarely hungry in the morning, so it was kind of disappointing. But anyway, there are many dark chocolate brands with varying levels of cacao. Um, I chose 72% cacao by Giardelli mainly because it is the one in the grocery store that always seems to be empty. I interpret that as being the most popular one. Interestingly, 200 calories of this chocolate contained identical amounts of fat and carbohydrate. That's a great combination for fat storage and appetite stimulation. And we can't expect too much blood sugar stability with only 3.3 grams of protein and a low fiber to carb ratio of about one to five. Also, dark chocolate is bitter compared to milk chocolate, so sugar often gets added. So even though this snack contains more than 70% cacao, which allows it to fall into the healthy chocolate category, Sugar is a second ingredient. So will it cause a blood sugar rise that is significant enough to negate the health benefit? After seeing the result, I would say yes. The dark chocolates earned a level score of four, elevating my blood sugar by 39 points. Interestingly, dark chocolate raised my blood sugar, but it went up in steps, whereas popcorn shot my blood sugar straight up. This is likely due to the fact that the chocolate was high in fat, blunting the blood sugar response. So there we have it. From the level score, we see that hard boiled eggs provided the best blood sugar stability, followed by raw almonds, dark chocolate, and popcorn. Now I realize that I may not have tested your favorite snack or presented these snacks in the way you like to eat them. There are thousands of snacks to compare. I wish I could compare all of them for you, but even if I could, the results I get may differ from those you get. For instance, if I fall on the side of being insulin sensitive, but your body is insulin resistant, how dark chocolate, popcorn, or other foods affect me will be different than how they affect you. You have ways to monitor your blood sugar level. You can pick up a blood glucose monitor at your local pharmacy and test your blood with a finger prick. You can ask your doctor to prescribe a CGM, or you can join Levels and get CGMs sent to you with or without a prescription. If you'd like to get Levels for yourself, you can do so completely online. Your first purchase will include a month's supply of continuous glucose monitors and a 12-month software membership. 
And again, if you go to levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky, Levels is offering an additional two months of their annual membership. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.